here's my preview of the Baylor at Iowa State women's soccer game. Iowa State is 3-7-3 on the year, 0-4-1 in conference. So this is the most winnable game left on the schedule. And you gotta keep in mind, last game, Baylor got royally screwed. And yes, I'm gonna say that because there was no contact after looking at the replay. With 18 seconds left, the refs called a very, very questionable call. And there was no contact by the Baylor defender on that one Kansas State player. And they won because of, of a penalty kick on the back call. And I would also say they were questionable overall. Hopefully, they get, uh, they get reprimanded or held more accountable. And they got evaluated. And I know Michelle Leonard said something about the refs. About that one questionable call. So hopefully she addresses it. She brings it up to the Big 12. And let the Big 12 deal with it. Because refs can't dictate games. I apologize for that little rant. Now some players. Keep, uh, they have used a lot of different formations. Like two defenders. Four midfielders. Four forwards. Five times this year. But they also have used three defenders, four forwards, and three forwards three times this year. And two defenders, five midfielders, three forwards one time this year. As well as three defenders, three midfielders, four forwards four times this year. So they used a variety of formations so far, Iowa State has. Some players are keeping an eye on it. Of course, they're goalie. Jordan Solenquitz. Number 29, six foot goalie. That's a senior. 19 goals allowed and 61 saves. I'm going to mention everyone who has scored this year, as well as as like given at least two assists on the year. So long, Pratt. Number seven started 11 games. Uh, you'll check out the stats on how many games they started this year in the description below. Five foot five inch forward. That's a junior. One goal on 10 shots attempted and two assists. Leah Kari, number 11. Now she's a forward. It doesn't, it doesn't list the height on this, on the website. So one goal and four shots attempted. That's a forward. That's a sophomore. Uh, try to look. Okay, Sophia Thomas, number 21. Five foot eight inch midfielder. That's a freshman. Two goals on nine shots attempted. Jada Colbert. Number 23, 5 foot 2 inch forward. That's a senior. Two goals on 22 shots attempted. Jasmine Colbert. Number 24, 5 foot 7 inch defender. That's a junior. Two goals on 14 shots attempted. And M Mira Emma, number 32, 5 foot 3 inch midfielder. That's a senior. Th two goals on 18 shots attempted and one assist. Of course, another player with an assist is like Eva. Stuckenberg, number 12, 5 foot 5 inch midfielder, senior, four shots attempted and one assist. Okay, so that's not a lot of notable players. But I will say this. Overall, you got to take out all that frustration you had from the previous game against Kansas State, especially that one back call, and take it out on Iowa State. Simple. I mean... This is the most winnable game possible if you're on a schedule. And I'm going to go over the Big 12 standings as of right now. Right now, I know Baylor would be 8th. They would be barely in it in the conference tournament right now. So you need a win here or a positive result. I prefer a win instead of a tie, to be honest. Because I really think you need to find a way to get this is the most winnable game left. Like I already said, I mean, the only wins include I didn't top 25 Michigan. They beat Iowa this year in Omaha. Yeah, that's the only wins they have on the season so far. And last game, you got to bring out, you didn't bring enough energy from the start. And you gave up that first goal of the game, which 
I know you scored later, but in that one goal you allowed in the beginning, besides that one horrible call, you should have cleared it out or never allowed that to happen to begin with. You got to be more sound defensively. You got to come out with more energy from the start. And I get part of it is because you're tired from a Thursday game, but now you know how it feels. You got probably today off and then prep and then travel to Iowa State. Right now, Texas is first 4 0 oh, 1 in the Big 12. TCU is 2 3 0 oh, 2 in the Big 12. Oklahoma State is 2 0 oh, 2. Texas Tech is 2 1 and 2. Oklahoma is 2 1 and 1. West Virginia, which is the following game after Iowa State, is 1 0 and 3. And they do a point system, and Kansas State is 1 3 and 1. And that one win, if it wasn't for that penalty kick at the end, it would have been a draw, and Baylor would be ahead of them. Actually, they would be, because four points compared to two points. But it didn't really affect the standings, because either way, bottom two. That much. Kansas is 0-4-1, and Iowa State's 0-4-1. This is a must-win right here. And offensively, you don't need to turn the ball over in your own end when you're on defense. You gotta be more aggressive instead of defensive. And keeping your own in so much. I mean and you gotta keep on keep that scoring. At least you score back to back games. It's just unfortunately it came with a very controversial loss. So like I said, take all the frustration from last game and apply it to Iowa State. That way you don't let the refs cost you any more games. And I'm not just talking about this game. I'm talking about here on out. Because the truth is, you don't need to put the game in the refs' hands. You need to find a way to score without a, the refs. You know, without them. Sure, they might call a penalty kick here and there. But I wouldn't count on it. Because, or even a handball in the box. On Iowa uh, or any opponent when uh, the opponent is on defense, that way, you know. You don't have to rely on that, because you never know. Those refs are very questionable at times. I mean, they call that penalty kick thing, like I said, but they didn't call anything at before then, similar to that. So it just goes to show they're just. Not consistent, and they need to be held more accountable. And I'm not just talking about soccer routes. I'm talking about any route in any sport. So anyway, you just gotta keep keep your heads up and move forward, and take all the frustration and and you gotta execute better on corner kicks in the game because you didn't score one time, not one time. On a corner kick. You had 11 of them in the game. And I'm going to go back and look at the stats. I know you also had probably more shots. You don't need to allow so many shots from the opponent like you did against Kansas State. Not as many. I'm going to go back and look at this. That's from the last game, and just give you a brief idea besides that one back call. At least that Renetta Vargas is stepping up big time. This was only her third career g game, and she scored three goals, and two of them against Kansas and one against Kansas State here. You allow 13 shots. Both teams had 13 shots. Kansas State had nine of those on goal, while Baylor had five. You got to not allow so many on goal shots for, for Kansas State. You can't, or any opponent going forward. Not that many. So, I know other stats include from the last game. Nine corner, actually... 
Nine quarter kicks from ba for Baylor. Last game. Nine of them. Yeah, Kansas State actually had 14 shots, but still. That's that's it, including that golden. That go ahead win goal on that controversial call. He had eight saves, though, and both teams have 14 fouls, so. And the foul was actually called on the goalie, which the goalie has a right to get the ball. So that's very, very controversial. So, like I said, take the frustration out on you. And it looks like you have, or you're going to be healthier. You're back in terms of a number of players. It's just you gotta, not all the way through, but at least you have some bench players. You gotta play with more aggression, like I said. So, and take all the frustration out. You gotta score more goals than one, especially when you have that many corner kicks in a game. I mean, you gotta execute better on that. And just go out there. You have nothing to lose. Except not making a Big 12 tournament. You need to find a way to win this game. You need to. Because with a loss, it can get a little bit hairy. Because you still have yet to play West Virginia. I know West Virginia is not that great so far this year. I know they're not. But they're talented. You have yet to face TCU. But I know for a fact that Baylor has defeated TCU every time since that regular season meeting loss in 2017. That's a fact. That's including conference tournament. Yet you have yet to face Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. So, besides West Virginia. So, you have like one, two, three. Four games left on that schedule. So you gotta find a way to win this win most winnable game possible here. I don't care how it, what it takes, but whatever you do, don't let the ref, refs affect you. I know it's out of your control, but just don't let the refs give the game away to the opponent or get put in the game in a ref's hands because you never know what they're gonna. And this is not just for this game, but any game going forward. Anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. It's going to be important to subscribe some more by the end of this year.